All right, here we go. We are getting closer to finishing up this Unit 10, which has been a very long unit, but here we are talking about trapezoids and kites. Today, you will apply the properties of trapezoids and kites. So we're going to try to hopefully keep this kind of simple and not get too crazy about it, but we shall see. So let's start off with all the definitions, theorems, and everything else that we want to talk about. And we're, let's talk about a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And so what would that mean? Okay, so here's a trapezoid. We will identify the parallel sides, usually with those little arrows that you can put on there. Uh, could be shaded in, could not be shaded in. I probably wouldn't shade it in, but you know, when you see it on the, on the paper, it probably would be. Anyways. What do you call the parallel sides? You call those bases. So the bases are the parallel sides. The sides that are not parallel are called your legs. So bases, again, are the parallel sides, and the legs are the non-parallel sides. Now, there are what are called base angles. If you take a base and a leg, they make an angle, and that would be called a base angle. Technically, there's four base angles. But we like to pair them up. So like the top base would have, in this case, I'm saying the top base, uh, would have some base angles of its own, let's say here A and B, and the bottom side, bottom base, would have also angles of its own C and D. Those kind of get paired up together, thought of together. There's a little reasoning there, um, but we kind of go with that for now, okay? Maybe we'll look at this more in detail later on. Next. So, if we put together, um, if the legs are congruent, then the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid. So if those sides are congruent and the top and bottom, or however you want to look at it, if the, uh, the non-parallel sides are congruent, then it's called an isosceles trapezoid. Otherwise, it's just a trapezoid. Is there some special properties for an isosceles trapezoid? Well, why? Yes, there is, and here they are. So an isosceles trapezoid is, uh, trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of its base angles are congruent. So kind of keep that in mind. So if we know that an isosceles, a trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles, the ones next to each other side by side, are considered congruent. Basically, in other words, the ones on each base. Um, if a trapezoid has one pair of congruent base angles, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So kind of a converse. If I say that the angles are congruent, then I know that the legs are congruent. And I know this is an isosceles trapezoid. If a trapezoid is isosceles, <clears throat> uh, okay, if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are also going to be congruent. So let's keep that in mind. How can that help us? Well, let's see, shall we? Well, first off, let's talk about a mid-segment. A mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that kind connects the midpoints of each leg. Sort of like that. Okay, and you can see there is a theorem there. That can go with it. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, and its measure is one-half the sum of the lengths of the bases. I like this one for, say, uh, a test or like a question. Okie dokie. Keep that in mind. Okie dokie. All right, let's talk about a kite. What is a kite? A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So here, it's not that the opposite sides are congruent, it's the ones that are next to each other. Okay, and they kind of have to be labeled which ones. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, so opposite sides though would not be congruent. Now, are there some special things here? Yes, a quadrilateral's diagonals are perpendicular. Also, the one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Not both, just one. Okay, doesn't matter, well, I guess it does kind of matter which one, but you kind of figure that out. All right, so let's look at the next thing here. Let's look at some examples. All right, so here is a drawing, and I'm going to say here is an isosceles trapezoid, and angle C has a measurement of 101 degrees. So what is the measurement of angle D? Again, when they're isosceles, then that means the angles, the, the base angles that work together, like C and D, are congruent. So A and B would also be congruent. And so could you find A and B? Yeah, you could because the whole thing adds up to 360 because it's four sides and then you can go from there. Um, that's something we might look at later. Also, let's look at the diagonals. What if I were to tell you that say uh, AC, the diagonal for from A to C is 20 
And then for the diagonal, but we only go to BE, it's 15, what would ED be? Well, think that they have, the diagonals have to be congruent on an isosceles trapezoid, then you could say 20 minus 15 is 5, and that way the whole thing here would be 20. So that's why DE would be 5. Okie dokie. Um, and yeah, that, that's, a, that's about it for that one. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's look at this one with, an, oh, the mid-segment. So if I give you, say, a mid-segment, I say find an X, well, keep in mind, the mid-segment, in this case, let's say this is BE. The BE, BE is, added, is half of AF plus CD. In other words, if you add the top and the bottom, the mid-segment, the one in the middle, is half of when the top and the bottom added together. So here's what I do. I like to get rid of the half first. I know we're used to, we see parentheses, we got to distribute. But you can also just, like, if you think one half is dividing by two, then what's the opposite of dividing by two? I can multiply by two. That would get rid of that one half, but if I do it on one side, I got to do it on the other side. So that's the first thing I would do. I would just multiply by two. And then that would give me this mid sec <clears throat> times two. And then all I got to do is subtract, and I've got an answer. And that's how you could find a mid, like you could find x or another line that's not based off the mid-segment. All right? Anyways, last examples. Let's look at some kite examples, shall we? We shall. Okie dokie. So here's a kite. And I tell you, okay, here's two diagonals. Find, say, AB. Okay, well, that's a Pythagorean theorem thing. You might have to go, okay, 4 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. So 4 squared plus 3 squared is 25. Take the square root of 25, and you get 5. Um, maybe you get something like that. Uh, maybe you do something simple, like with an angle. How could I find, say, angle G here if I know <clears throat> 85, uh, angle H is 85, and angle E is 120? Well, you notice how the 85 is in between these two sides that are not congruent? Well, then that means since these two sides are con not congruent also, then the 85 is going to be over here also. So now if I know that, I can add up 120 plus the 85 plus the 85, and then divide that, or I'm sorry, subtract that from 360, because again, all every time four sides, you have four sides, four sides adds up to 360. Uh, and then I could find angle H by subtracting from 360 and get 70. That pretty much covers it for now. Uh, we'll look at some more. Maybe we'll go over some more examples in class because that's probably what I'm going to do. And hopefully I will ask questions, not just complain, but ask questions to try to understand. Anyways, thank you for your time, and y'all have a good day. Take care.